Unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth, and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language, but the Word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the Word.
Romans chapter 12 verses 2. Give me the amplified version. Romans chapter 12 verse 2. The Bible says in Romans chapter 12 verse 2. Be not conformed to this world. Tell your neighbor be not conformed to this world. And the Bible says to this age. The amplified says this age. God says do not be conformed to this age. Don't be conformed to this world. This age. The Bible says, don't be fashioned after and adopted to its external superficial customs. But the Bible says, but be transformed and changed by the entire renewal of your mind, by its new ideals and new attitudes. Somebody say amen. So that you may prove for yourselves what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The Bible says, even the thing which is good and acceptable and perfect in the sight of of what? in his sight for you somebody say amen Amen. somebody say amen Amen. now when the bible says do not be conformed to this age what does it mean when it says do not be conformed to this age 2nd Corinthians chapter 4 verse 3 the bible says that if our gospel is hid the bible says it is hid to them which are lost if our gospel The gospel we preach of Jesus is hid. The Bible says it is hid to them which are lost. And the next verse says, And in whom the God of the or the God of this world has blinded their minds of them which believe not. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. The Bible calls Satan the God of this world. The Bible calls him the God of this age. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the God of this age. Satan is the God of this world. Praise the Lord. He is the God of this world. So the Bible says do not be conformed. Do not submit yourselves. Do not conform yourself to this age or this world. He's talking about you submitting yourself to the God of this world which is Satan. And you know the ultimate purpose and mind behind this fellow is deception. Revelation 12. The Bible calls him Satan, the deceiver of all men in the world. In other words, Satan runs the world, functions in the world according to deception. When the Bible says that my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge, lack of knowledge can either be because you don't know something or because what you know is deception. I don't know if I'm making sense. Sometimes it's not just the lack of knowledge. Sometimes it's the knowledge you have received but comes with a seed of deception. That is why the Bible speaks of liars as the father. I mean, like their father. He talks of a liar as one who is like their father, the devil. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because when it comes to the nature of the devil, it becomes a seed implanted because of the nature. When you are lying, the Bible says, for ye are of your father, the devil, and the last of your father you will do. He is a murderer from the beginning and a born not in truth because there is no truth in him. Where he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own for he is a liar and the father of it. Imagine a man lied and the Bible says you are of your father, the devil. In other words, there was a seed of the devil inside a man. Somebody say hallelujah. Now, if I start to speak about deception, 
for me it, it even worries my spirit to think at the degree of deception in the world if you look at what we define as maturity in the body of Christ not only Uganda but at large but to a large extent in Africa you can see at what level we are at as the body of Christ and you would even weep to know and understand fully how much ignorance is in the church and in the body of Christ. It's too painful. It's too painful. When you look at the book of Acts and you look at the experience of the early church, for those of you who read the Bible, you realize that freedom began when they met Christ. Do you understand what I'm saying? You find Christians today saying, ah, ever since I became born again, the trouble came into my house. We are rebuking devils every day and every night. We are going to delivering services every day and every night. You understand what I'm saying? We have not even yet taught people how to walk free. Because some of us benefit when they are bound. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? We can demonstrate power. So demonstration is wonderful, but only to the degree that I will get you out of something, but teach you how to walk free. For who saw the sun sets free? The Bible says it's free. Indeed. There is a man in the world right now who is dealing with legion. And he's born again. Born of the spirit. Do you understand what I'm saying? Now when will that man go beyond the place of deliverance? To know in God. For this is eternal life. That they might know the one true God and his only son Jesus. The devil has become more crafty in these days than he was before. Deception in the body of Christ and outside has gone so far. That's why the Bible tells you do not be conformed. Do not adapt. Because human beings by nature, we are, we are psychologically adapt to environments. You'll be amazed that you're not what you are. You'll be amazed that you are what you are taught that you are. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. It is what you put in your brain that you are. The potential of a regenerated spirit in Christ is way bigger than many people can imagine. Even when we become born again, we still maintain and fashion after. We adopt to the elements of the earth. Even after having the new life of the spirit, many of us have continued to stay men, noble men, mere men. Yes, we have flesh and blood, but there is something special about us. Definitely there is something special about us. There is something special about us. There is something special about us. A woman was testifying the other, after a couple of days ago. She was saying, yeah, I never used to believe Busimanya fibroids can live. She had fibroids almost the size of a baby. Huge. And she comes in one of our meetings and we pray for her. And then she goes to check and they cannot trace even a a dot of fibroid. You understand what I'm saying? That makes us different from the world. Whether the world believes it or not, we are different. Tell your neighbor I'm different. Why? Because I have the life which is of God inside me. He says, and these signs shall follow them that believe. They shall cast out devils in my name. He commanded us and said, go ye in the world. Cast out devils, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead. He says, for a long with thee until the end. That's our testimony. There is something on you in your life that science can't explain. There is something in your spirit that a doctor might not explain. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. It's called the life which is of God. How can you have the life which is of God and you're still bound to the superficial customs of this world? To the elements of this world? To the natures of this world? Hallelujah. Now when it comes to deception, it is on God's far. You see, I realized something about the devil. The devil is powerless, but he's crafty. Do you understand what I'm saying? He's not a dense fellow. He's a smart fellow. He knows how to deal with people. I'll give you an example. If you look at, for example, some of you have heard of the New Age movement. Eh? These New Age guys who call themselves eh? strange names, secret societies and what, and then they, they insist that they are enlightened to higher consciousness. Do you understand what I'm saying? And you see that these people access the world of the spirit illegally. 
Because they don't access it by purpose. They access it by lust. Because they are fleshly beings. Do you understand what I'm saying? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now when a man like that sees in the spirit, for example, he's not seeing for purpose. He's seeing to... to it's like, you remember the, the girl of divination, Apollos? The Bible says, For she brought her masters much gain through soothsaying. Why did she bring her masters much gain through soothsaying? Because the spirit of the world, once it sits in a woman like that, and then she can access the spirit world, she can access the spirit world. It will bring glory. It will bring praise. It will bring satisfaction. It will bring opportunity. It will bring pay to the man. Not Christ. The central understanding of Christianity as a worship. When I say worship, some of you think I mean choir. Okay, let me begin from, let me probably speak from the issue of worship. Not only choir, but what makes us worshipers in spirit and in truth. I was sharing with a certain person who has a dream to sing. He told me, I I dream to be a musician one day. And I remember telling them, you see, a a man can have a relationship with God. Are you hearing me? And because of the covenant God has honored with that man, that man sends forth singers ahead. Are you hearing me? And these singers sing, like the scriptures say in the Old Testament dispensation. And a battle is won. But because the singers have sung and the battle is won, a singer might assume that the battle was won because of their singing. Yet sometimes God was honoring the place of worship of this guy who set forth the singer. Sometimes you have to differentiate the difference between am I the priest burning the incense in the holy place or am I smelling the incense and assuming that I'm in the holy place? It's one thing for you to think that you know God because you're surrounded with people who know God. It's one thing for you to think that you know the Spirit because you associate with people who are of the Spirit. It's one thing for you to assume that you are in the presence of Almighty God because you're next to a man who is burning incense with his God. Sometimes that's why I tell people that worship is personal and it is in spirit and in truth. If a man has not understood the Spirit, and neither has understood truth. That man cannot be a worshipper. He can be a good musician, but he cannot be a worshipper. Because worship is a revelation of the person of Jesus. That is why we are worshipping with veils in the churches. Yet the veil is dealt away with Christ. For the Bible says, for in Christ the veil is dealt away with. But we carry veils in worship. And somebody says, you're leading in worship. Somebody a musician, right? And then somebody says, let's lead people in worship. And as somebody singing... What is in their brain is they have collected a group of people in the spirit and they are working together towards the throne. You understand what I'm saying? It's called false humility. You understand? Because you might want to take me places I've already been. Because you assume I'm where you are. Do you understand what I'm saying? That is why the place of a worshipper is not the assumption of where people are and you thinking of where you think you're going to take them. No. The altar, listen, and respect the altar. Respect the altar. It's not you leading. No, respect the altar. You remember Abraham when he's with the boy? He tells his servants, tarry here for I must go yonder with the boy and worship. They go to the mountain to worship with who? With Isaac. Now, the Bible didn't tell us that after worshipping, they went to the altar for the sacrifice. No. Actually, the whole act of separation from the servants, all through to the altar, all through to the tying of the boy, all through to the readiness to sacrifice what he loved dearly, all of that was worship. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's not the two songs you melt affections on. It is the understanding of the things that we give God costly. Listen, this was a man who was a close one. How many? A hundred years or something? And he had dreamed of having an inheritance through a son. He only had Eliezer. You remember? And he says, what have I except my son who is? I mean Eliezer, my servant. I don't have a child. Give me seed. I need a seed. I got childless. You understand what I'm saying? And God, after all of those years of barrenness, Gives him a child. 
And here is the testation. He is supposed to bring that child on the altar to give God. Are you following what I'm saying? And when they are on the altar, the son asks the father, Father, I see the stones and I see the fire, but I don't see the sacrifice. Abraham spoke a very profound statement. He said, my son, God shall provide himself a lamb. Carry her. Just put her somewhere there. He says, God shall provide himself a lamb. Now, if you think it literally, you might not get it. But if you go slowly with me, God shall provide himself a lamb. Are you getting what I'm saying? I need us to carry that woman God shall, will provide himself. Himself. Okay, you could think it from your place and say for himself. But God will provide also himself. You know, Jesus becomes the sacrificial lamb. Am I making sense? The lamb that was given for the propitiation of our sins. The Bible says not only for us, but also for the world too. So Jesus is on the altar, the lamb, figure. God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. You understand what I'm saying? Now, here is the child on the altar. And he's going to kill, literally, I tell people, Isaac died. Literally. Because the will to kill was there. So, he received Isaac from the dead. Do you understand what I'm saying? And Isaac is the ultimate entity that represents ransom. Because he's bought back by God providing himself a lamb. The altar is Christ. He is the lamb on that altar. We don't worship because we have nice voices. We worship because we have somebody on the altar. He says, if you raise me up, I'll draw men to myself. Hallelujah. The understanding that when you're on that altar as a worshiper, it's not about who you, who you are. It's not about what you're doing. It's not about what you're not doing. It's not about how you went through or whatever you went through. It's not about even the 25 prayers you made before you came on that altar. It's about that child of God, Jesus Christ. The Lamb of God which shed his blood for us. That one which knew no sin. And he became sin. That we be dead that those sins might live unto righteousness. And who stripes were healed. That guy, Jesus is, is... See, we have to put Jesus on the altar again. Because there are many things now that have taken the altar. There are many men on the altar. And they are on that altar's burnt sacrifice. You understand what I'm saying? Their enablers are not helpers. They are walking in love, giving their bodies for death. And giving all their, all their goods to the poor. Yet, they have not love. For God is love. And they that do not know God do not love. Neither they that do not love do not know God. And it is possible for you to give everything you have to a poor man. Yet still not walk in love. It's possible to give your, your whole life to the... And, and even give your, your body to be burnt. Because many people don't understand the true revelation of love. They do certain things and think that it is love. Yet it's not. A man can die for love. And another man can die and assume he's dying for love. And both men have died. But one man has died in love. And the other one is dying as an aneveler. Trying to satisfy his lusts. Because he looks at himself as the hero. And savior. And remove Christ. Do you understand what I'm saying? That is why even Peter. At the place when they are going to crucify him. He's still cognizant of the fact that I'm still Peter. There is a man I represent. Don't hang me the way you hang him. I want to bring a certain glory to him to make you understand that everything that I've been all doing all of my life, even though it seems like it is me, even though it seems like it is me, there has been somebody working in the inside of my spirit, both to will and to do according to his good pleasure. Now I'm at the time of death. But I still want this cross to turn upside down. Because them that read later on will understand. I still had a certain man in my spirit called Jesus. He was for whom I lived, for whom I died, for whom I gave my own life, and for whom I understood that worked in me in all things. He deserved all glory and praise. If Peter was a lustful fellow, an enabler without the understanding of helper, because helpers seek accountability. Helpers account and seek accountability. Enablers sometimes are just people who want to do certain things so they can be praised. Oh, you see me here. I'm the one who helped that guy. If it wasn't for him, ah, he would not be anywhere. Okay, so where is Christ in the equation? 
Jesus worked through you to help that fellow. So don't take praise because again it is Jesus who works in you both to will and to do according to his good pleasure. But the altar has been defiled and that is why we don't see God. Because I've realized this one thing. Every time you put Christ on the altar, the Bible says when Christ, which is our real life, shall appear. The Bible says we shall appear with him. God elevates your place in worship because worship is a place. Worship is supposed to be a place where you draw men to, not where you lead men to. But you see, the place of drawing men to where you are begins by you understanding where Christ is. Because when you understand where Christ is, the reality of him, it fills your spirit. And this is love made perfect. That we might have confidence on that day. For as he is, the Bible says, so are we in this world. It's not just the proclamation. It's the understanding of what it means to worship God in spirit and in truth. Somebody say amen. Is a neat deception to lead men where you're... Anyway, you'll understand one day. Now, for example, somebody can say, I was talking about units, for example. Say, ah, we're enlightened to higher consciousness. Do you understand? For example, the Bible says that Christ is in you, the hope of glory. You have the spirit of Christ within you. Do you understand what I'm saying? But then a man can twist the scripture and say, ah, the Bible says Jesus said he would come back. The second coming is the representation of Christ's consciousness. The fact that I'm conscious that Christ is in me. Has a spirit. That is the second coming. I've heard it in some circles. Now the devil knows that if that can be displayed as a lie, they're not only going to push that out as a lie, they're going to push out everything that is Christ conscious. Because they think that everything that is Christ conscious does not carry the wisdom to tell the difference. Oba Montegera. We are Christ conscious. I am Christ conscious. But I'm Christ conscious by the understanding that the spirit of Christ dwells inside me. I know that the person of Christ is more than just the entity that sits in me. He is the son of God. I know that that very Jesus Christ has a person independent of the spirit of him that is, residing, is, is resident within me. I know that he resides in me by spirit. But I know that there is a person of him that is way fuller. That when the Bible says that he shall come in the clouds... I know that that guy who is going to come, he's going to come full. Do you understand what I'm saying? So I'm conscious of the life of Christ within me. But I know that that is what makes me who I am. In him I live, move and have my own being. I represent him on earth because he's not in the flesh. And we are the body of Christ. And he is the head. You understand what I'm saying? But he is still Christ and we worship him. You don't say, okay, now me, I'm the Christ. I'm going to worship myself. You are good. You are good. You are good. You understand what I'm saying? No, no, no. You are not Christ. He's in you. You understand what I'm saying? That's why we what? We worship him. So if you go to the degree of deception, this began from when you were a child. The traditions we were raised in. When Simon the sorcerer was in the, in the, during his day, the Bible says that he did many wonders. He was called the great power of God. And the Bible says that men came to, 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 to pay homage to him because he was looked at as the great power. I mean, their minds were convinced that this is the great power of God. Capital G. If you read the book of Acts. So the Bible says that he did many wonders. He did much sorcery. Praise the Lord. And the Bible says that he, he bewitched people. Yes. Give me that probably from verse 8. Huh? Verse 9. Uh, but there was a certain man called who? Simon. Which before time in the same city used what? So sorry. And bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one. And the next verse says, To whom all get uh, heed from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the great power. Look at the G. It's capital. Of God. Do you understand what I'm saying? Simon had convinced people, me, I am the great power. They had believed it. If you were looking for the great power of God, you had to look for Simon the sorcerer. Then he met another man. <laughs> and the Bible says, and Simon forsook everything and followed the man of the spirit. Now, there are many things certain people think they are. And yet they are not. Do you understand what I'm saying? 
That's why the Bible says that if the light in thee be darkness, oh, what darkness there is. Some people think that they saw light of what is actually darkness. They saw, they, I read a story of a man who I was reading the other day, and this guy, he, he was visited by a funny angel, spirit. And he was convinced Jesus did visit him. And he lived a certain life, and he confused and was confused. And by the time the guy is delivered to actually realize it wasn't the Christ, now he confesses that I saw something that looked like Jesus, but it wasn't. If the devil has gotten to the level of appearing to a man as Jesus, do you know how much trouble the church of Christ is in? Because you don't have people who design the word anymore. People don't design the word anymore. They don't understand that. The basis of discernment is the word. You must listen. You must understand the word. He's the designer of hearts. He cuts asunder, separates the bone and marrow for what they really are. Until the church is really taught, men will not depreciate. That's the power of the word. When the word of God comes in your spirit, even if a fake guy comes, you can know that this guy is fake. Why? Because you have the word of God in your spirit. But tonight, in our time, people are not even in much teaching. People stand on pulpits to speak politics. People stand on pulpits to quarrel. People stand on pulpits to talk about who did what. You understand what I'm saying? Instead of preaching Christ dead and resurrected, we are defiling the altar. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. We are defiling the what? The altar. The altar needs Jesus. That is why people gather. He says they cannot come except I draw them. People don't. People, you see, you didn't come for me to tell you about my wife. No. No. You came for me to tell you about who? Jesus. Jesus. And him crucified only. And him crucified only. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So, you, you started when you were a child. You were raised in tradition where you started watching television. Television drew everything. The goddess media. Media. Drew the way you understand life. You switch on television and see people fighting. And then you think, ah, I think this is natural. You understand what I'm saying? You see people, uh, some of you, all of you, that's why your marriages are failing, your relationships are failing. Why? Because movies shaped your marriage. In, in primary school, you, you read stories of, of Mills, Mills, what they call it? Mills and, Mills and Boone. That one spoiled girls. And there was a girl I remember went to it in primary. She used to read Mills and Boons. Oh, oh, how wrong. Primary, primary. I think parents so, so you're funny. How do you buy a meal and boon for your child? What has an eight-year-old child got to do with understanding a love affair? Now, this girl was with me in secondary. She used to tell me, me, I must marry a white man. Me, I must marry a white man. No, listen. You don't, white or black, it's not the color. The issue is husband, not man. I don't know who I'm talking to. Do you understand what I'm saying? My husband, he's not romantic. What's your definition of romantic? You saw something on television. Now you want the guy to switch from his African nature and start treating you like, like a, a Mexican movie actor. African men show up differently. Hello? Me, my father didn't need to tell me I love you. Ah, he just comes and shakes me a little. And I know he's saying, oh, I love you. He just shakes me a bit. Am I talking to somebody? We, we don't know how to tell our boys. Not that it's wrong. We, we need to tell our children we love them. But also be patient with us. We are just adopting. You understand what I'm saying? Right in old age, our father just gets your hair. And then he messes it up a bit. Then you know he's telling you I love you. He just shakes your hair like this. Does it feed you? I love you. Do I close you? I love you. You understand? That's how we understand it. These restaurants you're telling men to take you to. Oh, listen. Our cultures. I'm not saying it is wrong. I'm only saying understand. That a few years ago there were no restaurants. There were fireplaces. Men were coming back from hunting game meat. You understand? That is they are adopting and mutating. Into understanding your movie definition of love. Because he didn't send me a text message to tell me he loved me. Then you pack your bags. Apostle, how can he not tell me he loves me? Listen. Is that enough to pack? Our mothers can tell you what they went through to be wives. 
That was nothing. How can he not tell me he loves me? Then you see a dot com child packing her bags, which is leaving the man because she, she. Our grandmothers cooked. They had children and grandchildren when they were not even given flowers. But they understood love in their own understanding. Why are those marriages stronger than the marriages of our day? They give you flowers, you send WhatsApp, you, they take you out and are the divorce rates in church. I'm more than the divorce outside. In the United States, I was reading the other day, 60% divorce rate in church. 40% in the world. Because we have a definition. Women equality. You have to treat me equally. Under the constitution. Wives, submit yourselves to your husbands as unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Give me the amplified of that. See the amplified of the message. Yes. Wives, be what? Submissive under what? Adopt yourself. Eh, eh. Adopt, underline adopt. Adapt, underline adapt. Adapt yourself to your own husbands as a service to the Lord. You adapt. Adapt. The man is supposed to love you, not adapt to you. No, you, you adapt. Submission. Even as it is hard to love our wives, even as Christ has loved the church. But we are trying Jesus has never given you a flower, but he loves you. You feel it in your spirit. <laughs> you even sing it, oh yes, Wanjagala. Anjagala, Anjagala, Gachitalo. Uh-huh. Did it take you to Sheraton? <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? With or without Sheraton, love is deeper than Sheraton. Are you hearing me? Love is deeper than like a small rose. That's why now they can deceive we young girls. <laughs> he gives you a car. Oh, he loves me. You faint. Because they gave you a flower. Hallelujah. That's why I tell people, marry on purpose. Don't just marry him because I know you love him, yes. But where are you going? You understand what I'm saying? Everything is telling you, God already told you. Fearfully and wonderfully made. You are the sea. You are my child. The other day I was reading something in Vesephania. Praise the Lord Jesus. Zephaniah 3.17 No, 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 not Zephaniah. Psalms. I think it was Psalms 103. Verse 5. Psalms 103. Verse 5. Yes, thank you. Now, the Bible says, The Lord satisfies your mouth. The Bible says, With good things. Right? So that your youth will what? Will be renewed like a what? Like an eagle. That's how God expresses his love through us. He gives us the word. He satisfies your mouth. You start speaking. See, when you start, when you read the word that you are more than a conqueror, that is love right there. I don't need a flower. No. When I read the word that I'm more than a conqueror, he has satisfied my mouth with good things. I have to be renewed. I don't really understand what I'm saying. I have to be renewed. The Bible says that the Lord joins over you with singing. Do you know God sometimes sits there? And then it's, what's your name? Uh -huh. Give me a name. Like Peter. He's starts singing. Peter, you are wonderful. That's the Bible says. Peter, you are a good person. I mean, imagine a God who rejoices over his children with singing. Praise God. That's the Zephaniah. Right? That's the Zephaniah. He sings over you. He sings. Imagine. God sings. Imagine, even you parents have to learn to do that for your children. 
find your child in the living room and tell him, you look beautiful. My daughter, you look beautiful. Even if your voice is bad, God understands. Hallelujah. He rejoices over you. He loves you that much. He loves you that much. Oh! For me, the moment I receive the word in my spirit, it's the guarantee. It's the guarantee. The Bible says, I gave up nations for you. God can look at a nation and look at you and say, nation, you, nation, you, nation, go, you. Listen, God can kill for you if he has to kill. For your sake. Why? Because you are his prized possession. That's how much he loves you. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. Amen. So, now, I'm going to go a bit deep and then finish. I realized in my spirit that when a man, when the Bible tells you do not conform yourself to this age, don't submit yourself to this age, do not, do not, do not pattern your world to this age. It means there is a way human beings have psychologically adapted to the world because of the way the world was made to appear to them. Not necessarily what the world appears to be. Do you understand what I'm saying? When we were growing up, our parents used to tell us, read hard. It says that you will be rich. You see why we, we used to read? You see what, why we used to read? Then we, as we were reading, we saw men who didn't go to school. And they were rich. So some people said, now why am I reading? I even saw men who didn't go to school. They were, they were knighted professors. Have you ever seen it? Yeah. The race is not to the swift. Neither the battle to the straw. Neither bread to the men of skill. So I said, now why am I reading? You understand what I'm saying? Now if somebody is not stable, they can even drop out of school. They can drop out of school. Because they say, okay, now why are you telling me that? I mean, why are you telling me? I mean, even there's some guys, that day I was reading about this Zuckerberg guy. You know, you also didn't do much school. Eh? The fellow of Facebook. Huh? Did he do much? He's not so much a land fellow like many people are. Saying, no, the issue of school is nothing from, from money. You see, he has depreciated it. But for me, you told me, if I read, I'll get money. Do you understand what I'm saying? That is deception. Education is not supposed to be a place of telling our children that they'll be rich. Education is supposed to be a place of telling them that you will become people. You will, it will build your character. Education, listen, is more of a character issue. You sit next to a Hispanic, you talk to a Mugisu, you understand how people live, you understand what I'm saying? And that's why parents get involved in their children's education because education is not what the teacher teaches on Monday and Tuesday. The parent also has to do their part at home. It's all part of education to build you as an individual character, to find purpose. Education is purpose. It's not money. No, money is a covenant issue. Money is a covenant issue. Give and it shall come back to you. Good measure, press down, shaken together. He says, shall men give to your bosom. If you're still struggling with tithes and you think God is going to send angels, <laughs> can you flood the principles and see that you'll see the blessing? You will not. Because the principles are clear for as long as the earth remaineth. As the earth remaineth. See and have a sign. They, 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 they're constant. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, you crammed it that way. Then you are told that to, to be rich, you have to be 40. Some of you think that to be rich, you have to be what? You remember the sermon I gave on Gloria Stars? And I was sh- how many of you have heard of that sermon? If you have not get it. I was sharing how the people of the world, even in the other world, have understood that you have to shine a certain way in the spirit for you to represent something on the physical. We are not all going to make it because of merit. If you're talking of merit, there will always be somebody better than you. Paul laid the foundation of the gospel, yet he was, the Bible says he was weak of speech, but strong in what? Some people think Paul was a deep guy, like articulate, like Apollos, fervent in the spirit and mighty with words. No, 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 no. He, 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 He was 
The Bible says he says he was very weak in words. That means Paul would even bore you on a normal day when he's teaching. <laughs> Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, for his letter says they are weighty and powerful, but his bodily presence is weak and his speech is contemptible. Give me the message Bible. The message version says, for his letters are brownie and potent, but in person he's a weakling and mumbles when he talks. That means prob- probably Paul was the kind who would sit on the pulpit and say, the, 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 the Spirit of God told me that I should, uh, I should, uh, uh, I have, uh, I, I give unto you that which I received from the Lord that on the day he was crucified. He took bread and break it. He says, Take! This is my blood. You could, maybe Paul was like that. And God chose the foolish things. You know, sometimes every time I look at any weakness in me, I always remind myself, this is why you anointed me. Every time you see a weakness, it should remind you, this is why he chose me. Me, 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 me. John loved Jesus so greatly. He was the disciple. who He was always around Jesus. He was in his bosom. There's always the rugged guy who is funny. You understand? He denies Jesus, but he says, no, on this rock, this one, which denies me, this one, which has a whole temper and can slice off a man's ear, this one is the rock on which I'll build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail. Even when he's going, he says, I see the devil shift you, but you're the one I chose. I know you're funny. That, Paul understood it. Paul, eh? He says, I will glory in my infirmity. Nobody loves to be a weak man. No. His weakness has always reminded him, this is why I anointed you. I was not going to anoint you. But when I saw that foolishness, I said, no, let me anoint you. I might have chosen another guy who was so straight and humble, well ironed and combed, but I skipped that fellow and chose you. Yes, you who was Rugambo, you who is a gossiper, you who is crazy like hell. I said, no, you're the one I want to admire. That is why when I see a believer, behind them I know God must have seen a weakness. Because he knew when he gets that weakness, he can turn it into a strength. He got he gets Judas of all people who has money issues. He tell him, You're the treasurer. Ha <laughs> ha. He imputes righteousness because he knows Onesimus left his mother's his servant's what? House a thief. He's imprisoned with Paul. Paul looks at a guy who is profitable. That's why I tell people, believe in people. You know, I, that for me, God has given me a grace. I have a grace for very mad people. I don't know how, I know how to manage mad people. Me, when I see a person, I say, That's how the gospel will work. When they look at you and they say, There are people here, they are sitting humble, but they, oh, if you had not gotten born again, mama, 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 mama. Some of them would even boast and say, Me, my anger, mine. When I get angry, I, uh, I can kill. Me, I don't joke. I, I don't joke. They are also raising holy hands. Putting on the new man. Which has been renewed. After the image. And the likeness of him. That created him. Oh hallelujah. Now the Bible says you are full of bowels of mercy. <laughs> No, no, read it. He says, you put on the new man, which is renewed in the knowledge after the image of him that created him. And the next verse says, well, there is neither Greek nor Jew. Circumcision, no uncircumcision. Barbarian, Sincetian, born nor free. But Christ is all in all. Back on the altar. That's why he says, Paul says, when I'm weak, then I know I am strong. I am strong. A young girl told me I slept with 24 men in one year. Even me, I did well. 
And she told me, I'll be honest with you, Apostle. I don't know whether I'll get married. I don't know whether I'll ever be. Because I don't know love. I don't know. I don't understand that I'm this kind of person. And I told her, I see. I have learned as a man of God that your greatest weakness is usually your greatest strength. If the devil knows you won't steal, he'll tempt you with stealing. Because he knows that's your strength. Did you get it? I have to make her understand. The reason why you were that spoiled, it's because the devil knew you were that strong. So he always wanted to substitute your weakness. I mean your strength with weakness. To convince you that that is weakness. Because he knew if it is strength, it will bring many to deliverance. And I tell her, now that you've discovered it, do you understand? Now that you've discovered it, live your life. You see, when, when a sheep breaks, eh? some of you have been shepherds eh? or animal, and then they, 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 they repair it, eh? the part that is repaired is usually stronger. The part that is healed is usually stronger than the part that didn't break. Do you understand what I'm saying? I, am I making sense here? Every time you look at a weakness, always know. I must be strong in this area. That's why it is. You understand what I'm saying? When you start glorying to God, when you start to fill your mouth, that's why I tell people it's a mind issue. Some of you, you have subjected yourself too much to the way the world thinks. You understand? When the world says you're weak, you also think I am weak. Why? Because you have adopted yourself to the thought. It's like, look at the life Christians live. Christians live like the world, not only in character, live along moral issues. Those ones, yes. But even in the things that some of you, you're too good, but you're too good according to the world. You're rich according to the world. You're intelligent according to the world. You understand what I'm saying? You're smart according to the world. To the world. You, you, you drive a car according to the world. You build a house according to the world. Your third world. I have to build a house of a third world person. I have to drive a car of a third world person because I come in a third world country. You understand what I'm saying? You, you think so, so worldly. Because when the world, for example, tells you you have to take 20 years to do this. Some of you think you again have to take... 20 years to do something. It's in your head. You, you, have, you have subjected yourself to the way the world thinks. You understand? Some, you, you, you fear Christians in silly conversations. Ha! Ah, ah, these days money is too scarce. You're conforming. Money is too lost. It is not anywhere. Then a, a Christian also contributes. Yeah. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Poverty is everywhere. People, people, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. He says, adopt new ideals. Get a new attitude. I don't know who I'm talking to. Adopt a new attitude. When you reach people, say, I don't know who Poverty is in your place only. In mind, there is fullness and abundance. There is an overflow of every good thing which I want. Listen, that's how you have to think. You find guys reading in high school, at your university. I have an anger, the paper. This guy sets hard papers. He says, ah, I'm the marking guide. Marking guides. Marking guides don't fear papers. A few days ago, a lady came in my, house, in my office and said, Apostle, they proposed to me. And I said, congratulations. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> yeah, I told her what? She said, I fear. I told her, what do you fear? I don't know, I just fear. I knew she was watching a lot of movies. Those Nigerian things, to God be the glory. Where the man leaves the husband, then he cheats on his wife, and then, uh, the wife, sorry, woman leaves husband because the husband cheated on her, then they cheat, and he also cheats, and then the other one kills the child of the other one, then, then a, a, a ghost crosses the road of the, of, the, of the woman coming to avenge the death of the husband, and the, those ghosts in Nigerian movies even look like this, that the car doesn't knock them. Then they cross. They say, this one has been watching. Tell your neighbor, don't be conformed. If marriage in the world is not working, mine will work. Get married happy. Knowing very well that your marriage is Christ and the church. 
I can't fail in my, I can't know here and fail here. Ah, I can't know, but some people fail. That is them, not me. Tell somebody, not me. Somebody shows you an empire and says, you see this? Even you one day you'll be this. It took me 20 years to build it. I'm saying, no sir. Me, I'm going to do it in a few years. A few years. Why? Because it is me. Because it is me. I've realized the gospel has told you whatsoever. Not in 20 years, no. The gospel told you whatsoever. 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 We are entering a time where people are going to do in months what takes people years to do. Then you'll show them, no, I did it this way because that's me. I, I, I bear the nature of God. Greater is he which is in me than the devil in the world. I was telling you, I was preaching the glorious stars and I said this this message, somebody out of this message, your star is going to shine and God is going to throw you places you never could have gotten to by merit. A young man in that meeting told me, Apostle, I, that day I knew it was my message. I don't know that the guy is here. That is the guy. He received that message that day. World Bank came looking for him. Why is that student? They came to school looking to hire him. They skipped people with master's degrees. Degrees. And all these things. They went to him, school, looking for him. You. You're the one we want to hire. You. World Bank. You can sit down, man of God. Tell your neighbor, the race is not to the swift. Neither the battle to the strong. But there is something that happens to a believer. It's called Ripa Katala Bayekete Sapatalakaye. That one can open offices that you never step in by degree. That one can open offices that you could never step in by connection. That one can open doors that you could never step in by network. That one can open doors that your intellect could not open. That is the advantage we have. I refuse to conform. To the standards of this world. I'm the head. I'm not the tail. I'm above. And I'm one only. He told me from then on. People look for him to hire him. He was in my office this week asking me. I have two deals. And all of them were so big. He was asking me, which one should I choose? That's good counseling. Tell your neighbor, no more. No more. I have the word of God. I'm fixing my family. I have the word of God. I'm fixing my marriage. I have the word of God. I'm fixing my finances. I have the word of God. I'm fixing my ministry. I hope to reap even where I've not sown because the word of God promised me there are houses I've never built vineyards I never planted why? he is the seed and I have him the days have come to an end where men used to predict what we have tell your neighbor the Abagambanzi Tell anybody they're talking about me. How can World Bank look for a student with no work experience? It is the one they want. It is the one they want. It is the one they want. They don't want a working person. No, we don't even this time need work experience. We are looking for a certain fellow.
These days, a certain bank had, was trying to fix some things. And um, <clears throat> their MD told them, we are living in a time right now where it's not about mathematics. It's not about economics. It's not about the ability to sell. It's not about branding. He said, we need a man of God. So he walked to a guy who works in the same bank, who is the leader of one of the departments, who comes to Fenero, who is the best performer in the whole group. Not group of the bank. Groups like bank, uh, branch Uganda, branch where, branch name. He goes to that guy. He tells him, you're born again. Where is your man of God? They call Apostle Grace. <laughs> now, I'm seated on this table. Full of executive committee. The auditors are there. Everyone is there. They're supposed to be planning. I speak about Christ. <laughs> <laughs> the boss says no we don't need anything more whatever he has said is enough we, they were supposed to be planning on how to eh, sell they closed the meeting immediately no no no, no we don't need more Any, what we've had is enough go, and go back and work it is well with us you understand what I'm saying answers to what prayer there are places you're going to enter with the word and now I'm prophesying on your life. There are places you are about to enter. And they are going to look at you and say, This woman didn't have a degree. This one, she can't even speak English well. Me, I don't know who I'm talking to. But these are my days. Tell your neighbor, these are my days. That is why I changed my attitude. I don't think small, I don't dream small, I don't talk small, I don't hold the world's ideals. I sit like a kingdom child. I'm a bit spoiled because he has made me spoiled. The word has made me spoiled. He has given me everything that pertains to life and godliness. He has blessed me with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. He told me I'm the head and not the tail. Above and not below. The path of the just shines brighter. It wasn't me. No. Blame the God who anointed me. Tell somebody, blame the God who anointed me. The message Bible says the ways of right living people. Tell your neighbor, that's me. He says they glow with what? Light. And he says the longer they live, the brighter they shine. Mama! Mama! I'm shining. I'm shining. I'm shining. I'm shining. I'm deeper. I'm shining. I'm shining. I'm shining. I, I cannot fail. Tell somebody I cannot fail. I'm winning souls for Jesus. Getting them saved every other day. I'm fulfilling the great commission. In the name of Jesus. Everywhere I go. I shine to win them. I shine in the markets. I shine at my workplace. They're going to see the Jesus inside me. Blessed in every way. And they're going to believe that I'm anointed of God. Because I realize the problem is not having money. The problem is not the having of money. The problem is the having of money without purpose. Without Christ. The problem is not the books and the education. Even if you have the best marriage in the world. But it's not preaching the gospel. It's wasting time. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. Sometimes I hear... Stock exchange market sinking. And then you hear Christians saying, Oh, 
what are we going to do? No, listen. What are they going to do? Not us. There's a solution with us. He says, I know the plans that I have for you, saith the Lord. Plans to make you prosperous and not to harm you. Plans to give you that future and hope, that expected end. There is poverty in the government. The money is scarce. You hardly find a coin. What will they do? Not us. We know what to do. When there is a casting down. That is why I tell Christians. In the time when money is scarce. We are going to grow most. In the time when unrighteousness is, is scarce. We are going to sign with righteousness. In every way. Where there is a deficit, we shall be the addition. We shall be the fulfillment. Men are going to look at us and tell us, me, I just want them to ask me, how do you do it? Uh, we are not approved by men. Men don't approve us. You understand what I'm saying? Men don't approve us. We are approved by God. The opinions of men don't approve us. We are approved of God. Not even the way you feel in your body approves you. You are bigger than what you're feeling in your body. You're bigger than what the doctor said is in your blood. You're bigger than what you're feeling. You're bigger, way bigger. The Bible says that the spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity. I refuse to think like the world. I refuse to build like the world. I refuse to respond like the world. I refuse. Be delivered from it. Be delivered from the yoke of the world. It's full of deception. Some of that's deliverance right there taking place. Some of you think you have to do many things to be certain things because that's what the world told you. You adapted to that pattern. Unplug. And plug into Jesus. Plug into Jesus. This is the generation that is going to do things very quickly. They are rushing, but they are the speed of, of light. <laughs> they are the speed of light. Because in them is what? Light. What difference is your duka no papa? The two papa two duka. Can I say it in English? There's a difference between just rushing, eh? Fatherly, panicking, and, 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 and running by the speed of the Spirit. We are running by the speed of the Spirit. We, tell your neighbor, don't be mistaken. The Spirit of God gave me this speed. Because that's what believers are. We move by the Spirit of light. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts. That light inside. I, I travel by the speed of light. When you switch on, ah, that's the speed by which I struggle. That's how. I, that's the speed by which I, I... We just happen. Ah, look at this. Look at this. Look at this proud fellow. Look at this guy. He thinks everything is easy. Who told you it was hard? The world told you. The world told you. The Son of God is moving. 5,000 men are walking with him. And there is no food and he's not worried. He's not worried one bit because he knows. He knows. He knows that he can feed them. Not by the economy. Not by. by, by. They were in dry ground. Something is happening. Something's happening. They were in dry ground. You know, I'm talking to somebody who has taken too long in something that should have come so quick. That's the one I'm talking to. There is an anointing in this house that is going to get you from one place and throw you to another place. You're going to wake up another person. I know you've struggled for 20 years. 
But the Bible says, remember not the former things. He says, for behold, I do a new thing. He says, and it shall what? Spring forth. He says, it shall not be heard. It shall not. It shall not. It shall not. Why must we think that I have to take 20 years to be something? Because my father was it. Why must I think that because I'm a third world country and third world African Ugandan person, I can't be a billionaire by dollars? Why should I think that way? The world made me think. Some are getting tickets to go to America because they think America is the source. America is not the source. Jesus is the source. I had a preacher a couple of days ago saying, oh, I was in America, and then I was in America. I, I wanted to tell him, yeah, I'm in Uganda. Because some people think, listen, even the Americans believe God. They are, they, they are what they are because their forefathers set a certain relationship with God. If America walks out of God, America will break. Do you understand what I'm saying? Righteousness exalted the what? A nation. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, you don't need to go to Great Britain. It's great. You understand what I'm saying? But you see, you, it's, you don't need to go. You, 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 listen, you can be rich here. You can be blessed here. You can be anointed here. You can expand here. You can increase here. And they look at you and say, this guy, so God. The issue is not there or here. The issue is God. That's why the Bible says when Lot left. I love the way the scripture says it. The Lord stayed with Abraham. <laughs> the problem with many of you. You just want to. You, you don't understand how God works. You, you want to be like Apostle Grace. You want to be like prophet so and so. Teacher so and so. No. Even when he was dealing with Joshua. He didn't tell him, I'll, get, I'll make you like Moses. No. He told him, I will be with you. As I was with Moses. I'm not going to limit what you're going to do on Moses. Moses could be a limitation. The grace on him can live in the wilderness. The grace on you, Joshua, crosses these lands. He says, I will be with you. Even as I was with Moses. As I was with Moses. He says, I'll be with you. That's all you need. Let the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of Lubega Grace, and many men who have gone before God, be with you the same way he was with them. That's all you need. You don't need to be like Moses. You don't need to be like Paul. You just need to be with the source. Be with me as you are with our fathers. It shall be enough. Because the challenges in my time are not going to be the challenges that they had. But I'm surely persuaded. If you're with me the same way you walked with Paul, I will finish. I will finish. Sometimes I look at the people who have gone before us and the price that they paid for the gospel. And I look and realize mine is lighter. Because they're the first to go through everything we are going through. And that's the reason why I don't get dismayed and distraught and disappointed. By people who never understand this gospel. Because I know who called us to glory and virtue. Sometimes it's not what they say. No. It's when I sit down and I think to myself. Do you understand what I'm saying? I could answer. And then not walk in love. I'd rather go to the individual and talk with them. But not. You understand what I'm saying? It's, 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 it's the understanding. It's the understanding in your spirit. Is God with me? I don't care whether they fired you last week. That's not the issue. It's God with you. I don't care whether you're sleeping in a small little room house with a little saucepan and you don't even have anything to eat tonight. It's God with you. Do you understand what I'm saying? I don't care whether the, the, the doctor said that you have these days to live or these months to live. That is all insignificant in light to the glory of His grace. When you turn your eyes upon Him and fix your eyes only on Him, he says, I joy, I rejoice over you with singing. I sing songs for you. 
I look at you on the world and I start dancing and say, there goes my boy. When I start preaching, I, I feel like Jesus is dancing, saying, wow, Apostle is preaching. He's tapping Paul. Apostle is preaching. He's tapping Peter. Apostle is preaching. And God is just in heaven above. Say, my boy, there's my boy. He has my boy. And then he gives Ezekiel, Ezekiel, Ezekiel. He rejoices over what you do. Every success, God is dancing. He's saying, that's my child. You win something, he says, that's my child. You have victory, he says, that's my child. You come out of cancer, he says, that is my gene, baby. You can't mess with it because I'm inside it. Tell your neighbor, God owns me. The Bible says he possessed me from my mother's reins. He possessed me from my mother's reign. We didn't wait before your mother begat you. He possessed you. He, he said, this one is mine. He, he says, thou hast possessed me in my reins. Thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. Even in your mother's womb, he put a cover. You could have died. You could have died. But now he said, no, uh You can't touch grace. He has to preach in 2017. There are things that can't happen to me. Even my mother knows it. They just can't happen to me. God knows it. That these things can't happen to me. So you can say to yourself too. He should have killed you at birth. But God covered you and said, Neda, you still have a destiny. There is still a story to you. What eye has not seen. What ear has not heard. What has not entered the hearts of man. Condition your spirit. Fix your mind. Are you hearing me? Fix your mind. Known to God are all his works. From the beginning. God has finished. Even the thought pattern of a child of God is a finished work. When I say, for example, I want to drive a car. In your mind, there is no word want. In your word when you say, I want to drive a car. In your mind, you're driving it already. That's how you're supposed to be praying. Some people drive cars in the spirit and then they come out of the same cars in prayer. They build ministries in visions and then they come out of those ministries in prayer. Because when they pray, they don't pray as it is finished. They pray as it is going to happen. Listen, the Bible says with God, God doesn't understand the way you understand future, past, present. No. God is at the end. It is finished. Jesus said, it is finished. What is finished? Everything is finished. You want to build? To God you are finished. You want to do ministry? To God you have finished. It is done. So what do you do? You just thank. You enter prayer with thanksgiving. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you God. For everything that you have done for me. Thank you, God. Some Christians talk like people of the world. In future, I'm going to do this. Listen, we are... Uh, a Christian can't say in future, I'm going to do this. That's the world. You are eternal. You don't belong to the future. You're eternal. Meaning, you, you belong to the future, present and past. You don't say, I'm going to do this. No. You say, I'm this. That's why the guy used to say, Let the weak say I am strong let the poor say I am rich let the blind say I can see listen to the last word it's what the Lord has not will do not will do not will do has done for me oh Oh, to the Lord. Oh, Jesus, I, 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 let me finish with this. When the Bible says that you have put on the new man, which has been renewed, which is renewed, which is renewed, which is renewed, 
which is renewed in the knowledge. You see, you must understand when you became born again, God set you in a certain nature. When you became born again, God set you in a certain nature. So the reading of the word reminds you of that nature. You are already what you want to be. That's why it is too late for the devil. Light shines in darkness, present continuous. Darkness comprehended him not. First days. The devil never understood you. He stayed in the past. Because he doesn't understand why they say it is finished. It is finished. You everything. See, you are already healed. You just need to receive it in your spirit that it is so. Everything you're believing God for is already done. I pray like a man with whom all things are finished. That is why I get results. Even when I'm praying for sick people, I pray for them like it is finished. Not like it's just going to happen. That is too slow for a spiritual man. I'm ahead of my time. Tell your neighbor I'm ahead of my time. Now this is my house prayer for you. I want you to raise your hands as I speak these words. My heart's prayer. Just raise your hands wherever you are. You can stay seated. You can stay standing. Whatever you want. I decree upon your life that tonight a grace out of the word spoken tonight delivers you from the attitude, the ideals, and the standards of this world. I decree and I declare that from today things shocking are going to surround you. Things amazing are going to engulf you. Things I has not seen are going to do work in your life. From today, people are going to look at you and they are going to fail to explain you. They are going to fail to explain your ministry. They are going to fail to explain your vision. They are going to fail to explain your wisdom. They are going to fail to explain your, your wealth. They are fail, going to fail to explain the results that are happening on you. And I mean from today, the impossible. I mean things science can't explain. I mean things the economy can't explain. I mean things that, 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 that circumstances can't explain. I mean things that your education level cannot explain from today. Unexplainable things are going to start happening in your life. Are you ready to receive it? Power the house! That is it. That is it. Say, God, I receive it. Now I want you to take 60 seconds and speak everything as it is done. Thank you for my children. Thank you for my job. Thank you for my ministry. My healing. Thank you, my God. Oh. 
The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041-466-4291 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at UMA Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero. Make manifest.